Hey, first graders, it's Mrs. Bello. It's time for our art class. So we need, today you're going to need a pencil, piece of paper, and if you have a Sharpie, that would be great. Otherwise you can use a black marker or a ballpoint pen and some crayons. Now, if you don't have crayons, that's all right. You can stop as soon as we have finished the drawing. So let's get our supplies and we'll get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the art categories. Do you remember how in class we talked about the five different categories of art for drawing and painting? Well, let's look at these and let's see if we can decide what category they belong in. This first one is a picture of a table with a guitar and a bottle and some fruits and vegetables. What would you call this category? A still life, that's right. How about this picture? We've got a lot of land and a little bit a lake and some mountains and people in a boat. It's mostly land, so it's a landscape. Okay, how about this one with all of the water, a big wave in the ocean, a seascape. That's right. Now this one down here is also a picture of the ocean, but there's some land with people walking. It's still a seascape. You're right. Okay, here's a funny picture of a man with a bunch of squares. This is done by Pablo Picasso, but it's a picture of a face that's all broken up. It's a portrait. And this last picture, it's a little harder to see, but there are a bunch of buildings with the street and a, some people walking. The buildings give us the clue that it's a cityscape. Okay. So now that we've reviewed our different categories, today we're going to be drawing a landscape. And because we're getting close to Easter, we're going to be drawing a bunny landscape. Now, landscape has three different parts. It has the foreground, which is the part that's closest to you, and the objects are very big in the foreground, and we always draw it at the bottom of our paper. The second part is the middle ground. It's in the middle. And all of the objects are drawn medium size. So they are about half the size of the ones in the foreground. And our last part is the background. It's the smallest part because it's the farthest away in space. Remember, space is one of our elements. And in the background, the things are very small. And it's at the top of our paper. So let's get started drawing our bunny landscape. So you need a piece of paper and a pencil, one with an eraser, so that you can erase. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw our foreground. So we're going to draw some big hills. So draw one that goes across like this. And then draw another one about halfway like this. Now this is our foreground and it's at the bottom of our paper. Okay, now our middle ground, the things are medium. So we're going to make some medium sized hills. So go all the way across. This time I'm going to probably make three hills. Okay, those are the medium size in the middle ground. Now in our background, we're going to draw some smaller hills. So draw one, two, three. Now we have our background hills. Now in each section, foreground, middle ground, and background, we're going to draw a tree and a bunny rabbit. So in our foreground, it's the closest to us. We're going to draw the tree very big, and it's going to take up most of the paper. So we're going to draw our 
curve line on either side like this. Now you're like, well, it's overlapping my hills. Well, we're going to erase those hills because the tree is in front of those hills. Okay, so draw the trunk of your tree. Then we're going to draw the top part of our tree and you can make like a cloud and it overlap your trunk like this. It's nice and big. Now the part that overlaps our heels we're going to erase. So you use your eraser and I will use the whiteout. Remember you always draw with a pencil but I have to use the sharpie so that you can see it on my screen. And so I'll use the whiteout to get rid of all the lines I don't want to show. You use your eraser. And we're going to do a lot of erasing today because we're going to be overlapping. Remember overlapping means something that is in front of something else. So this tree is in front of the hills. Okay? Now let's draw our tree in our middle ground. So it's going to be medium size. It's going to be about half the size of this one. So we're going to draw our trunk like this. Now draw the top of your tree, your little cloud shape that goes on top of the tree. Now what do we need to do? We need to erase the part that overlaps. So we're going to erase all the hills that we just overlapped. You're like, how are you erasing Sharpie? Remember, I'm using my whiteout, my whiteout paint to cover up the Sharpie. Okay, now we're going to draw our tree in our background. What size is our tree in our background? It's small. It's going to be tiny. So it should be about half the size of the one that we just drew in the middle ground. So draw it at the top of our paper because it's in the background. And anything that overlaps, we are going to erase. Okay, now we're ready to draw our bunny rabbits. Let's go back to our foreground. Where's the foreground? It's at the bottom of our paper. So we're going to draw our bunny rabbit right here next to the tree. And the way we're going to draw our bunny is we're going to draw an upside down U like this. Let me get you in the picture here. There we go. Now we can see the bunny rabbit. Okay, now let's draw two dots for his eyes. Then we're going to draw our upside down triangle. Remember a horizontal line and a V to make his nose. Then we're going to make a J and a backwards J. And give him some whiskers. Now we need to draw his ears. So draw a curve line to a point. Remember, his ears are kind of long and pointy. So then draw a curve line back to his head like this. Now, if you want to draw the inside of his ears, you can, like that. Let's draw his other ear. Curve line up, and then make a point and curve line back to the top of his head. And then draw the inside of his ears. Now we're going to make our bunny rabbit waving at us. So let's make his arm an L shape. Then make another L underneath it. And then make a curve line on top like that. And we're going to make his other arm two diagonals and a U shape like that. Now we need to make his feet. So draw an upside down V. Then his 
Well, those are these are going to be his legs. Now we're going to do his feet. So draw the letter C. And then the bottom of it, curl it around to come to the V here. A backward C. And then connect it to his leg like that. Then give him a little puff tail. Little cloud like that. Okay. Now, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video and you can rewind. Now, we've done one in, let's put a little bit of grass so it looks like he's standing up here. Okay, now let's go to the middle ground. We're going to draw the same bunny rabbit, but because he's in the middle ground, he's going to be medium sized. So, let's draw, let's draw him over on this side. The upside down U, two dots for his eyes, the upside down triangle for his nose, J backwards J, his whiskers. Now we're ready to do his ears. Curve up, then curve down. Then curve up and curve back down. Now this guy, let's just put his arms out to the side. So do two diagonals and a curve line, two diagonals and a curve line. Then make a V and connect his feet. And if you have room, make his little tail. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the background. Let's see if you can remember how to draw him. He's going to be teeny tiny in the background. So we're going to do our U and I'm going to go ahead and erase because he overlaps the hill here. If you're drawing it and it overlaps the hill, then you go ahead and erase and he's going to be super tiny. So I'm going to do his ears and his arms he's going to be waving with both arms our v and you probably are going to barely see his face i'll come back because it's not dry yet okay so now we have our tree and bunny in our foreground our tree and our bunny in the middle ground and our tree and our bunny rabbit in our background. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a road. Now the road is going to be big at the beginning and get smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes back. So in our foreground, we're going to draw two curve lines over the hill like this. Okay. And it should be get closer together at the top and wider at the bottom of the hill. Let's make our little road marks there. Okay. Now the next hill is going to be smaller than this one. And because my tree is overlapping, I'm going to have to draw part of it coming out here. So. It's not going to match up because it goes over the hill and then it's got to come back up this hill. So I'm going to make it like that. Okay. Remember it's wider at the bottom and closer together at the top. Then the next hill, we're going to make it smaller as we go back each hill, the road is going to get thinner and thinner. Okay. So this hill, should be a little bit thinner than this one. Okay, so he's going over this one, up this one, over this one. Now this one, he's going back even farther. It's getting smaller and smaller. It does not have to match up because we're going over hills. You see how it's thin, at, wider at the bottom and thinner, but it's smaller than this one. And our very last hill, it's going to be teeny tiny because it's really far there, far away like that. Okay. Now you can add whatever you want to your picture. 
Now, this, these bunny rabbits might be hiding Easter eggs. So if you want to draw some Easter eggs, okay, in the grass, you can draw some flowers. Now remember, flowers in the foreground are going to be bigger than the flowers in the middle ground and bigger than, and bigger, smaller as they go back. And if you do bushes, you got to do the same thing, okay? And so you could have some Easter eggs hidden in the trees. You could put, I don't know, haystack and put some Easter eggs in the haystack. You can put some more trees. You can put a car on the road, whatever you want to in your background. Now, once you've drawn all the details with your pencil, and I want you to add at least 10 details to your picture, you can do more. Remember, you can put clouds in the sky, but do not put the sun in the corner. The sun is not a triangle shape. So if you make a sun, make sure it's a circle. Okay. Once you're done, you can outline it with Sharpie. If you don't have a Sharpie, use a ballpoint pen. Even if you don't have either of those, you still can color it. Just be careful that you stay inside your pencil lines so that we can tell what it is. When you're done, if you give your picture to someone else, now you have to send it because I don't want you getting too close to anybody. Send it in the mail or take a picture of it and send it email to your grandma. Take a picture of yourself mailing this or sending it in the email. Um, and now we'll put you on our wall of kindness right now. There are 25, 27, I think 27 first graders on my wall of kindness. So keep working, keep drawing, keep doing art and showing kindness to other people. And I will talk to you next week when we work on a seascape. So you take care and stay safe. Miss you. Bye.